Hey, ladies and gentlemen, what is going on? Welcome back. This is Force, and here today we are going to be taking a look at Magic Duels Origins for the PC. The game launched, I think it was like a week ago on uh, iOS devices, but it's now here on the personal computer, and I wanted to sort of take you through it show you what there is to see and then give you some first impressions i've done this with the past few installments of duels of the planeswalkers now this is a little bit different though uh, magic duels origins they're sort of taking a different direction many would see this as a response to the wild success of hearthstone on the uh and the digital plane and you know magic the gathering very successful physical card game but hasn't been quite as popular in the digital format there is uh, magic online but you have to purchase all those digital call cards individually making it just as expensive as the physical card game without actually having that product in your hand and then there's been magic duels of the planeswalkers which has been i think i would say a successful series in the sense that it provides a casual much less expensive way to enjoy magic the gathering well it seems like there are going to be shifting things up here a bit in magic duels origins the game is going to be free to play but with that in order to unlock cards you're either going to have to uh get coins by going through the games like story mode and training or just by purchasing them you'll notice right i mean right front and center this is the first screen you come into when you boot up the game access to the store right here with the store now we can buy some boosters and we have to spend coins as you can see i've got 30 coins i finished basically the first training mission and it gave me 30 coins, and if I wanted to buy one booster pack, I'd have to spend 150 coins. Now we can, of course, big big red button right here, get more coins. Let's see how much it is. 150 coins is $1.99. It's $1.99 for a booster pack. And as uh, the price goes up, I'm assuming you save more money. Yeah, you get 500 coins for $4.99. It looks like as you go up and you spend more, you're getting a better deal, most popular, best value, blah, blah, blah. you know, you know how this stuff works. It's a free to play game, it's just how it is. Um, so yeah, let's just take a look at it. Let's give you some first impressions. All I've literally done is the tutorial. So one of the first things I'll say before we hop into actual gameplay, um, you can see me just going into and out of things like settings and then looking at this different stuff, much, much snappier than uh, magic, um, than, than duels of the planeswalkers 2015 2014 like this is actually really good and responsive it doesn't take you know it's it doesn't sound like a lot but it doesn't take like 10 seconds to go from one screen to the other it, the last installment duels of the planeswalkers i was not impressed with it in terms of its uh ui performance it just wasn't but this is this is good. It's it's moving quick. It's it's been snappy. I like that so far. So let's just hop into the story mode. Let's take a look at some gameplay here. You can see I've got a, all these different things. Um, now this is going to be adding. We're going to actually have real Planeswalker cards here in Magic Duels Origins. That's exciting. If you're not familiar with it, Planeswalkers are just incredibly powerful, unique cards. Well, I guess hopefully we see a Planeswalker come into play eventually, so we can take a look at that. But let's hop into first mission of story mode here. See if there's any. All right, so here you go. Yeah, you can see as I go through the story mode, we're going to unlock some coins. Excellent. So let's do this first one. You lead a small group of street toughs known as Kytheon's Irregulars. Together you act as a force for justice and charity in the slums. While raiding an Akroin estate for food, you draw the attention of the city guards. Okay, so got to watch out for the city guards. Here's my first duel. Welcome to your first magic duel. Apply what you have learned in the skill quest to defeat your opponent. So those were just, it was just a basic training thing that I went through. I figured no one wanted to watch that. It was like literally how to tap a land kind of ridiculous stuff. Uh, so you'll notice much different UI here. Uh, I, I think I like it. You know, I, I've grown accustomed to Hearthstone's just top-down perspective as opposed to the slanted virtual game board perspective where you're going to only be able to see, like, slightly your opponent's cards and you have to zoom in on them. But it's okay. It's not a big deal. It is what it is. So to start off here, we're going to be some pretty basic stuff you can see as I uh, look at a card. Any unique attributes to it, I'll be able to click right on it like this. A little bit easier to interact with than Duels 2015 was. So if it had First Strike, for example, it would say that right here. I could click on it and get details on First Strike. Last time, you have to just scroll through all these different things, which was kind of annoying, but, you know, it is what it is. We're going to play our creature animation for it going down. Uh, now, I disabled a lot of the stuff, like the combat animations, things that basically just make the games just take longer as it goes through. Uh, I just, you know, it's, it's all personal preference. Those are things that you can keep on, uh, keep on when you're playing. So let's see what we look. I mean, we've just got some pretty damn basic stuff here. I'm just going to go for max damage. I'm going to play our uh, Swift Claw here, the 3-1 creature. 
toss that down into play. So again, uh, even just this, even just the gameplay interface here, quite a bit smoother than I remember the last installment of Duels of the Planeswalkers being. And it was a huge complaint. Like, I, you can go check out that video. I was not super impressed. Um, you know, I liked that we were getting more options. Uh, they had the draft mode and stuff. I liked that we, we got to see new cards because it's a new du duels installment. Like I pretty much just always pick those up just because I like magic that much and I like to see, try out the new metagames and all that stuff. But uh, there was a lot about last year that I just didn't think was great. And um, I, so far from what I've seen, I've only spent like 10 minutes with this game prior to starting to record this video. It's feeling, it's just feeling a little bit better. The feel of the gameplay things coming into play. I feel like it's less taxing on my system. And it's not because I don't have a good computer, it's just the game was terribly unoptimized, it seems. Um, so he's gonna block and kill my 3-1. We're gonna let 2 go through. I'm just, I, I guess I just have to assume that this first duel is just gonna be pretty damn basic stuff. But I at least just wanted to show you some combat, and I wanted to show you what the actual combat interface looks like. So you can see it tells you uh, details of what's going on over here, like it's my opponent's turn. We've got the different phases over here. Uh, the main phase, combat phase, with attacking, blocking, and then responses, and then there's the end step, and then now it's my turn, it goes to my first main phase, then the uh, parts of combat phase, second main phase, end step, that's what those icons over there are. Alright, he plays an 0-3 wall, he plays a 2-2 soldier, we have got a 2-1 with flying, so, and vigilance, beautiful, so this is what I was talking about, you can see here, we can now click on these, Get details. Creatures with flying can't be blocked except by creatures with flying or reach. And we could go back and get details on vigilance. Creatures with vigilance don't become tapped when they attack. So a little bit easier for new players to interact with these things and take a look and get detailed information as to what all that stuff is. Uh, toss that in play. I guess that's what that thing meant. I didn't even know. I clicked on it. I'm not, not even knowing what it was. So I'll attack with all of these, uh, only two damage is going to go through, and he will kill one of my 2-2s, but at the loss of his 2-2 here, it's what we expect to happen. So he blocks both, blocks that, blocks that, two goes through, trade creatures, that's fine. Loving that we've got the uh, flyer here now. So I'm, I'm really excited to see uh, the new cards, how this metagame is going to look. I'm especially excited to actually play with some Planeswalkers, I think that's going to be really awesome. And I think we're just going to continue to flood the board here. Uh, we should do this after attacking, but, you know, whatever. It's the first mission <laughs> in the story campaign. Clearly pretty basic stuff here. Let's swing with all of that. Vigilance won't tap when it attacks. He's going to block one of them. Four will go through, bring him down to ten. Unless my opponent has any sort of a response here, which it looks like he does not. Probably, uh... For future videos and stuff, gonna turn down the background music. It's overpowering compared to this animation sounds. I typically like that to be a little bit lower. But you know, first time recording with a brand new game. I don't know what the heck I'm doing. Uh, something I am interested to see, I don't know if it exists, but I am seeing a, a decisive lack of a timer. So in the past installments, there's been a timer for each of the phases as well as a timer for your total turn. And I'm not seeing any of that here. We're not seeing any countdown unless this bar is supposed to be representative of something, but I just see it glowing constantly. And I don't see any indication of, you know what I'm saying? So I hope they didn't remove the timer entirely. That would actually be not cool at all because then players could literally just AFK and sit there forever. Or it could just be a hidden timer. It could very well be what it is. Unless this circle, unless this timer I'm not seeing it take down or anything, though. Well, I, I guess the, the point is, I pray that there is a phase and turn timer and that we just can't see it, that they just haven't surfaced it. Uh, you know, Hearthstone has a turn timer, and then once you get close to the end, there's a rope. Maybe something similar happens. Maybe something across the middle starts ticking. I, I, I don't think it's surprising at all that all prior installments of Duels of the Planeswalkers, as far as I am aware, have cost money. Hearthstone blows up as a free-to-play card game in the digital space, then Magic, uh, they decide to release something very, very similar. Like, uh, I'm just going to say it's probably not a coincidence. So if they're taking many notes from uh, Hearthstone, I wouldn't be all too surprised. I would not be all too surprised to try to transfer some people and give them something familiar when they come over. Okay, so we beat the guards. Big surprise. I don't think anyone's shocked by that. 
And I don't, I don't think I want to put you guys through the torture of having to watch another one of these damn basic uh, game gameplay matches again. Because your opponent's life total to ten or less before your fifth turn. Yes, we got all sorts of achievements up here. Starting on your third turn, attack every turn until you've won. And then we've got a deck upgrade. Okay, so all sorts of achievements have happened. Yes, you can continue the story. You fight your way out of your hideout, but you realize continued resistance Put your friends at risk. You lay down your weapons. The guards haul you off to the dungeons. You were sentenced to 10 years for thievery. That's terrible. Um, so I'm assuming that <laughs> these are going to continue to be super basic um, games. And I don't I don't want to put you through that torture. But you get the idea. You know, we go through Gideon. Do all of these. And then we move on to the next Planeswalker. Is that Jace? That might be Jace. I don't know that. I don't know all the Planeswalkers, but that looks like that's a guy who could be Jace. Um, so I showed you the store. I showed you that we could buy boosters or you could purchase coins, get bigger value by saving whatever. And then you buy yourself some boosters. Wonderful. Um, then there is battle mode here. Versus battle, play against uh, other people, friends or matched opponents. Solo battle, which you could just get play against AI. They brought back two-headed giant glorious day. Freaking about time. I can't believe they ever removed that. It's just the best, you know? Why would they get rid of it? Um, but then the deck builder. We don't need to go into that quite yet. Um, I'll show you the card collection. So you can see uh, all of the cards. I can show all the cards that I own. So it looks like we start off with just a basic assortment of the cards of all colors. And then some artifacts here. We got some tap lands, which is nice. Oh, mirror. Ooh, that's very exciting. If there's going to be mirror decks, that's um, I'm looking forward to doing that. So start off with very few cards, but we just got some basics. I don't think there are any rares in here either. All I'm seeing is commons and uncommons, right? Unless I'm missing it. Nah, it looks like so they they give you no rares to start, just a bunch of commons and uncommons. But you can show all cards, and we can see. Yes, there's quite a variety. Um, and I think the total number in the deck is showed in the filter, filter pool, 251. So there's 251 total cards, as far as I can tell, at the moment. And we're assuming, with time, they'll be adding more and more cards, different blocks, different themes, fun stuff like that. But yeah, it's just a quick perusal through all the stuff here. And uh, we can make decks. It's not letting me click on it here for some reason, but it does let me click on it. Uh, back in the versus mode pre preparation so we can go back there and just kind of putz around and do whatever um, they're gonna be quests as well I have not unlocked them it seems as though I need to do a few more things in, in the basic UI you can see access it by following the uh, trail of sparks through the menu to learn more about the features of magic origin so once I've learned about all the features which I'm guessing you can see the sparks here in battle mode and the sparks in my deck so maybe once i've made a deck but they're basically going to be quests that you can unlock coins with so in addition to uh beating people online going through the main story you're also gonna have quests to unlock coins to purchase boosters so there's a deck wizard step-by-step -step deck building assistant no thank you uh, i'm just gonna go with the deck builder okay so add cards drag them there um so we've got a variety of options i might just go with white weenie uh, because I think that'll make the most sense. Or red. What do we... How aggressive is this red deck? I guess it could be pretty aggressive. We could also just go red-white. Red-white would be pretty good. Got some options for green. Not enough early creatures, it looks like, for green, though. So I don't think I'd want to go green yet until we unlocked more cards. And uh, I got some fun... Oh, my gosh. I remember it. Bottle gnomes. <gasps> oh, man. That was... That was was that Exodus? I'm trying to remember where it was. I that card, I saw that played in decks and I enjoyed it. Okay, so anywho, <laughs> um, let's let's take a look at what we'd be looking at if we just built a white weenie deck. So we can go through the filter here and um, so wait, are there only 94 cards? I thought it said 200 some odd. There's 98 cards total. Is that really all there is? Because I thought the collection said... I'm not sure. Oh, no. These are all the cards we have access to, most likely. Out of the... Okay, I see. Right. That makes sense. Okay. So, anyways, let's try, try building White Weenie. So, we're going to do three Elite Vanguards. Um, four of the Sun Tail Hawks, which is just a 1-1 one, one flyer for one. Let's see. Gets plus one, plus one, as long as you control an island. Meh. If you go with the Reprisals to get rid of creatures with power four or greater, I might just do two of those. Let's go with four of these. Enters the battlefield. Target creature gets plus one, plus one to end of turn. That's not great, but it's not terrible. Get four of those, four of those. Let's get three of these guys. Who's this? Pilgrim enters the battlefield. My search library for an aura card. And um, just to confirm, those are both auras. 
So I think we will throw that in there. Because we've got a bunch of ores that we can dig for with that. Uh, this has got flying for a strike. It is pretty costly. Put two of those in the deck. Uh, so that's 26 cards. And we're going to want to get to 40. That's not quite enough. So why don't we go with white and one other color that will also lend to our aggression. We could go red. White red is a fairly popular combo. So why don't we go with white red? Uh, do 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 do. No, could have Denison gets okay. He gets pumped up. We we'll get more red creatures in play. Sacrifice this to deal two damage. Wait, wait. Do I want that? Could put two of the infernal fists. This is just. I'm just. I don't mean. I. I literally. I'm just throwing whatever together. Um, I don't think I'd want to take just the two one. Oh, 39 with dual color. Maybe we just do 21 lands. Maybe I should do 22 lands and I should dump one more thing. What should I dump though? I probably don't need four of each of those. That might be. No, let me dump one of these. That two red could be painful. Okay, so let's go with 22 lands then. That's what we'll do. So let's filter out clear filters. Let's just filter lands here. And what I want is the red white tap lands. Get four of those. And I'd like to take a look at my curve and stuff. We've got more white than red by quite a bit. Um, 26 to 12, so that's about double. So we're gonna want about double the white to red with 18. Why don't we go with, we could go with 10 and eight. Why don't we go with 11 and seven? We go with 11 and seven. So we're gonna go with 11 of these. Um, looks like you can't, and this is something that bothered me. Um, I wish you could just enter a number, you know, a lot of this is obviously carry over from the fact that they also are available on mobile. I mean, the game freaking launched on mobile before it even came here. So it's just a bummer that, um, I don't know. It's just kind of a bummer. All right. So we're going to go back. We're going to, um, save changes. Okay. So this is my deck. Oh no, we don't want to edit it. Is it just... Go back. Okay, so that's my deck. We'll go back to battle mode. Now that you have a deck, it's time to put it to use. So let's do the solo battle then, okay? We got a deck. Let's start out with a duel. Hit continue to play. Ooh, wow, okay. So we can do duels and we can choose and we can get coins based on the difficulty of the duel. Now, I can only start off with easy. I'm sorry, that's just how it is. I can't do anything other than what the game lets me do. These are first impressions. This is literally my first time going through the stuff. So it, it, it just is what it is. Okay, here we go. Wasn't too long of a load screen. Force versus opponent. <laughs> All right, here we go. Here we go. Start off with the tap land. Yeah, let's keep this. We'll just start off with the tap land. He's gonna play a uh, Demir Guildgate. So same guild gates that were available in the last installment of duels. And I think, yeah, I think we'll just do the tap land. I know it means we're playing nothing right now, but next turn we get to play two creatures, the Arsonist and the Sunhawk. And we need to draw into a third land. 22 in the deck means we should get into something within the next two turns. Uh, otherwise, we're, we're not screwed, though, because we could still divine favor. Okay. Do we play the tap land now? No. We play this. We play both creatures. And uh, this way, next turn... If we if we if we can play the guild gate as well as the divine favor, uh, so play the arsonist comes into play deals one damage to. Excuse me, when it dies, deals one damage to a creature player, and then we also have our suntail hawk, which is a one one flyer for one. So next turn could very well be the boros guild gate plus the divine favor, which is a plus one plus three, and we're definitely gonna put that on our flying creature, so that's what it's gonna be. We're gonna play the guild gate. We're gonna play the favor on our flying creature. So plus one, plus three, plus we gain three life. This is gonna bring us up to 23. Looks like just one, two, three ticks. And then we attack in the air or for two, plus one on the ground. So three total damage. That's gonna be a full swing of uh, six damage. Three life for us, three life loss for them. And next turn, we can play the sky hunter. In fact, I am an idiot because I should have saved that for Sky Hunter. But this lets us search for an aura card, reveal, and put it into our hand. So it's not that big of a deal. What is this? 
Tides, oh, he's playing a, this is a rare card, what the hell? Uh, Tides does not have flash if you pay two more to cast it. Enter the battlefield, you may return target tap creature to your opponent's hand. Okay, so he's gonna return this to my hand. Unfortunately, that drops the aura off. I think what I do now, though, oh uh, boy, do I? I think I'd like to play the Sky Hunter right now. So it's a 1-1 one, one flying with double strike. Next turn, I can play my Pilgrim, search through my library for one of my various aura cards, and um, I will attack if he blocks, I'll, I'll use it to kill that. Um, and then, when if I pump this guy up, it's gonna be huge, huge with the double strike. So double strike means he's gonna be swinging twice during combat phase. Very, very cool. First strike damage and then normal, normal damage. He's gonna swing for two, that's fine. Let's see what else he does. I'm I'm uh, uh, I'm very bummed though that the freaking easy opponent gets rare cards. And I'm sitting here with all commons and uncommons. Rawr, rawr, rawr. I pay to win. Rawr. Edge of battlefield. Tap target creature opponent controls. Does not tap during its next untapped step. So he's gonna do that probably to my double strike. All right. Well, I guess that's not a huge deal because it's not, it's annoying though. I'm not gonna lie. I'm pretty annoyed right now. Um, <laughs> let's play the uh, pilgrim. Enter the battlefield, my search library for an aura card, reveal it, put it in your hand, shuffle your library. So, whatever gives the most attack value, plus one, plus two flying, this is probably gonna be the, that's probably gonna be it, huh? Yeah, Inferno Fist. I'm probably running way too many auras given that I have um, these pilgrims times four. Like, running the number of uh, auras that I am is kind of silly. Let's just save it for blocker. I'm gonna save it for blocker so I can use it to kill whatever I block with. Oh my god! Are you for real, dude? Oh, thank god he didn't do this. Thank god he didn't do my double strike. Oh, that makes me so happy. Oh, I'm gonna hit him for so hard if he doesn't have anything else. Okay, so let's kill this dude. So we block that, like that. Let the two go through. He dies, we do one damage here. Oh, it doesn't tell me to choose between creature and player now. It just lets me manually click on it. That is amazing. That is a big difference. That makes me very happy. All right, we're going to play the Inferno Fist on him pre-combat. So it's going to be plus two, plus zero. Oh. Okay. And then that means I'm swinging for six damage during this attack. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and move into combat phase. We're going to swing with everything we can, which is going to be this guy. Three damage goes through first strike damage. Three damage goes through a second time normal combat damage. That is the uh, that is how double strike works. So there he goes, takes down second main phase. We're gonna play the Sun Tail Hawk. It was either that or save mana to sacrifice the Inferno Fist, but I don't think I'm gonna wanna do that because I've got a feeling that I am going to be winning with that fist. Smashing that fist into his face. We're gonna do six, seven damage next turn. He swings for four, we just let it go through. And I'm gonna do another pilgrim and dig through for another fist. All creatures, are you for, this is the easy deck? This is supposed to be the easy deck that I'm playing against? Are you for real, bro? This is ridiculous, another tap land. Oh my God, I can't even handle it. Let's play the pilgrim. Um, what would I search through for? I probably search through for my fly giver, the Nimbus wings. Uh, because that'll make him unblockable next turn unless he plays a flyer. So, well, it looks like these pilgrims are gonna be a game, uh, champions here, game winners, undoubtedly. What is this garbage? Intimidate, okay, can't be blocked except by black or artifact creatures is what intimidate is. Doesn't matter though. I think I am going to win this. So pre-combat, we Nimbus wings him. Plus one, plus two, and flying. Let's move into combat phase and swing for two. Okay. And then I'm gonna play my other pilgrim, and I'm gonna search through for fist. Because... We will have... Four, five, six... Oh, that's not enough to win yet. That's fine though, whatever, this is what I want. So it's gonna be four, and then it can be six damage with the sacrifice of the Inferno Fist. It's a bummer that I didn't have the mana to sack this with his board clear. Uh, can't block, 
Exile two target creature cards from your graveyard, return the spoiler of souls from your graveyard to your battlefield. That's pretty interesting, okay. Such cool artwork, man. What I have always love about Magic the Gathering is such cool artwork. Okay. So, I believe we just tossed Infernal Fist on him pre-combat. We move into combat phase, swing for four, and hopefully we can win next turn. Let's see what happens, though. We will see what happens, though. We're gonna play the Suntail Hawk. Well, that might be a mistake. If he has, no, let's not play the Suntail Hawk, because if he has mass removal again, I'd like to be able to follow it up with something better than nothing. Oh my god, no, what is this? Scry five, then reveal the top card of your library. If it's a creature card, you draw cards equal to the power of tough. Oh my god. Okay, so he scries five, he gets to take the top five cards, look at, put it in an order that he wants, and then if one of them's a creature, he's gonna put it on top. He doesn't, what? That means he didn't have a creature in the top five of his library. Wow, that's insane. Oh, and you know what I just realized? This is uh, pretty nice that the number counts um, right next to the deck and graveyard. Just take the damage. And um, the, I, the font is nice. It's nice to read. I don't know if that sounds like a thing that... You know what I'm saying. <laughs> All right, well, we're just going to swing for everything and win the match. And then we're going to back out, take a look at any of the options or things that we missed, and uh, I guess wrap things up with uh, some conclusions here. Force defeats his opponent. Congratulations, five coins. Good for me. Continue. All right, let's see. Search your library for an enchantment card. All these stupid achievements. Don't really care. Yes, congratulations. You've constructed your own deck and taken a powerful Planeswalkers. You've unlocked every play mode. If you need help, help or options. New quests are given out every day, so they are daily quests. Now that's confirmed. I assumed as much, but now we know. Um, okay. As a community, cast 15 of, oh, <gasps> that's really cool. I like this a lot. Look at this. Man, Blizzard, take notes. These sort of community events, very cool. They get people to keep playing to try to get that reward. I think that's amazing. So look at this. We've got five days, essentially, four days, 23 hours, to cast 15,000 enchantment spells in multiplayer duels. As of right now, um, excuse me. 15,000, 59,000, does that mean we won? <laughs> I'm guessing that's a bug and it's supposed to be 5,936 because we that is way surpassing, unless I'm dumb. I don't think I am. Yeah, that says 15,000, that says 59,300. Clearly that's wrong. Uh, but anyways, point is, if we surpass that within the time limit, we're gonna get the gold. Or we have surpassed it so quickly and just we have to wait four days, 23 hours to get the gold. But either way, that's cool. And then we've got this right here, which uh, you know, win two duels with these type archetypes, um, blue, white, green, white. So was that uh, Syl Sylvan or something? Or and, and uh, Azorius, something like that. I don't know the name of that garbage. But anyways, yeah, quest. These are the quests. Pretty cool, We uh, weekly quest, daily quest for the individual. And we can filter through. Yes. Sick. Yeah, man. Take notes straight from Hearthstone. Do what you gotta do. All right, so let's talk about this here. Pretty sure we've looked at everything. We looked at card collection. We looked at battle mode. I mean, I haven't shown you. I haven't shown you, like, absolutely everything. I'm not gonna go through. You guys, It's there's gonna be two-headed giant, and we can play against other people. We'll see my games against other people uh, with Friday Night Magic. That's gonna happen. Um, but I showed you some gameplay, showed you deck construction, showed you the store. You know, a couple things that I can't I can't touch on right now. I can't touch on the fairness of the uh, the coin collection because I have no idea. That's something that's gonna take weeks and months to sort of figure out. And frankly, I'm just one of those people who tends to just buy the big package and purchase all the cards that I need. That's just myself personally. So if you're gonna want to look at this from a free-to-play perspective, you are gonna have to get opinions from elsewhere because number one, it's too early to judge. Number two, chances are very slim that I'm gonna play this wholly as a free-to-play game. Probably just gonna buy a boatload of coins. Um, but people will, of course, voice their opinions as to whether or not that's fair. And, you know, we've got we've got coins from doing the main stuff like you've seen me do, the story mode, the battle mode things, uh, going through the different, um, you know, it told me to 
defeat a planeswalker and I can unlock more coins, whatever. Get our quest, and I believe you also get coins just from defeating people in multiplayer battle. Um, card collection appears at the moment. They are somewhere in the vicinity of 250, there's 251 cards total. You're gonna have to unlock them by purchasing boosters. Um, I'll be interested to see how they work with like duplicates and stuff like that. Uh, but anyways, so far I'm pretty impressed, um, at least gameplay wise. I think the game once again plays much smoother. Very, very happy with the uh, responsiveness and the snappiness of the UI. And normally that wouldn't even be something you bring up, but last year's installment of Duels was just so bad that I think it's worth mentioning. They've made it better, they've made improvements. Very happy to see the two-headed giant is back. Uh, frankly, I'm glad they've taken notes from Hearthstone. I think that the game needed improvement, and this is how this is how the market works, man. Competition breeds better products for the end users, uh, ideally at least. And this is a great example. Duels of the Planeswalker has been kind of disappointing the past few years. They've stepped up their game. We'll have to wait and see about that fairness for the coins. But so far, I like what I see. I'm, of course, going to spend more time with it because it's magic. And why wouldn't I? Um, stay tuned for upcoming Friday Night Magic. You guys are going to get to see more gameplay. And in those episodes, I'll probably talk about um, how I think this game is going uh, as time progresses, as I spend more time with it. But thank you so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed this uh, little peek at Magic Duels Origins, available for free starting today. You can download it via Steam. Thanks a ton, guys. I'll see you later. Have a good one.